and the C-H-A-L-L, your Dogs Drovers channel, and welcome to today's edition of the DRFC Daily Reports, bringing you the latest news, match reaction and transfer activity surrounding the ins and outs of Dogs Drovers Football Club. Today, it is of course the reaction from Darren Moore and of course the rest of the results from last Saturday's match week. Match week three is done. I can't believe we're already three match weeks into the season. Uh, now, don't forget guys, in a few days time we're going to be releasing uh, the September monthly review. Uh, so, the day before the date's released, I'm going to be recording a monthly review, the first one of the series, and uh, it's going to review all the results of September, the transfer activity, and uh, just talking about my thoughts, really, on uh, the whole month, and give it a nice rating out of 10 in different categories, so uh, that video will be coming over there. And, uh, of course, we've got a very exciting video coming next week, or towards the back end of next week, so stay tuned because it's a very exciting video that I've always wanted to do as a football YouTuber, and uh, I think you guys will really like it, talking about my club and also his club that I'm going to be working with on the video as well. Uh, but for now, guys, we're going to chat to you guys about the results from Saturday. Uh, of course, Lincoln Charlton doesn't kick off until 3 o'clock this afternoon today, so, of course... Uh, they are they are st still with the game in hand, so the table will change uh, between wh when this video is up and uh, after the Lincoln Charlton match. Uh, very happy once again, well done Charlton to uh, your new owner Thomas Sangard, and uh, also Lincoln City. Hopefully, you can get a good result and keep up with the pace of the top uh, three or four. But in my opinion, hopefully. Hopefully Charlton wins today, just so we can stay third of the league. <laughs> um, but for now, guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, click OK so you never miss a YouTube video. And let's get started with the results from Saturday. Accrington Stanley 1, Oxford United 4. Crew Alexandra 2, MK Dons 0. Dongster Rovers 4, Bristol Rovers 1. Fleetwood Town 0, AFC Wimbledon 1. Gillingham 2, Blackpool 0. Ipswich Town 2, Rochdale 0. Northampton Town 0, Hull City 2. Plymouth Argyle 1, Shrewsbury Town 1. Portsmouth 1, Wigan Athletic 2. Sunderland 1, Peterborough United 0. And Swindon Town 4, Burton Albion 2. So taking a look then at the league table, you can see Ipswich Town and Hull City, the only teams in the league with a 100% record start. Lincoln can join them if they beat Charlton this afternoon. Uh, but at the minute, they are staying fifth with the game in hand. Doncaster and Sunderland move into third and fourth respectively after their wins. Very happy with my team's progression. Gillingham, Swindon, Wimbledon and Plymouth make up uh, the rest of the four places. Swindon Town getting inside those playoff places uh, on a goal different system. Gillingham just behind and then Wimbledon and Plymouth on five points. Into the next eight and of course... On four points, we kick off with Northampton Town in 10th, Charlton in 11th, but of course a win will take them uh, near those playoff places from their current 11th place. Uh, Oxford United, Fleetwood, Blackpool, Crewe, Burton, Alcrington, Wigan, all on three points now. Uh, to make up the places between 12th and 18th. Peterborough are the other team with three points. In 19th, going into the bottom half of the table, Shrewsbury just outside the relegation zone on goal difference to Portsmouth. MK Dons, Rochdale and Bristol Rovers are also waiting their first win, but only have one point on the board. So there we go, that's looking at the league table and of course the scores from Saturday. And like I said before in the past a couple of times, Lincoln and Charlton kick off 3 o'clock this afternoon. So if you're Lincoln or Charlton fans, make sure you go and watch it on the iFollow. Now, talking about this weekend's games then. Um, very, very good array of fixtures. Swindon Burton was just as much a goal fest as Donny Rovers was. And, um, you know, very, very good there. Um, and, you know, I think Sunderland winning against Peterborough, that's obviously, you know, on paper, it's one of those top of the table clashes, you know, technically. Uh, but, of course, Sunderland with the win, they move into the playoff places. Peterborough United uh, only have the three points on the board uh, from past games. So, of course, they're going to stay uh, in that bottom half. 
but uh, I'm sure they'll I'm sure they'll climb when the season comes. Of course, Lincoln can become the third team with a hundred percent record if they beat Charlton today. But at the minute, it's just Ipswich Town and relegated Championship team Hull City. Uh, three wins, three clean sheets, uh, and a hundred percent record for Hull City. So uh, brilliant start to League One under Grant McCann. I think you know I agree with what what we're saying on the AFL and Quest. I think that. Um, you know, many owners would have, you know, got rid of Grant McCann after the horrendous form in the championship in the second half of that season. Uh, but they stuck with him, and now they've got three wins and three clean sheets. So, uh, you know, you can only praise Grant McCann and the, t and the what they've done with uh, with Hull City over there. Uh, Keen Lewis Potter, brilliant young striker. I think he's got an exciting future in football, and uh, here's to an exciting future. Uh, forevermore. Um, Ipswich Town, 2 0 win over Rochdale. I think that, you know, Ipswich Town did deserve a couple more goals, in my opinion. I think Rochdale could have had a couple of chances, but I think that Rochdale were just not very at the races. Uh, good to see Oxford getting a win. 4 uh, 1 as well, very comfortable against Accrington Stanley, but I'm sure Accrington will bounce back from this. Um, some other great results, you know, overall around the league. So uh, that's looking at the table. So at the minute, Doncaster are just behind those automatic places. Very exciting. And uh, hopefully we can stay third. Hopefully, for, for a Donny fan's sake, hopefully Charlton beat Lincoln so we can stay uh, third. But uh, I've got a feeling Lincoln might snatch one. But should be interesting. Should be interesting. I'm going to predict, in fact, to be fair, I'm going to make my prediction now since it's going to be a Sunday 3 o'clock game. I'm going to predict for this one, um, I'm going to predict, you know what, I'm going to go with a 2-1 Charlton victory. I think they've signed Ben Watson, they've signed Akin Femowo, I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, I don't, I'm not sure where he's from, but I know Ben Watson's a former Watford midfielder. That's a good signing for League One, a good Premier League and Championship experienced um, veteran midfielder. That's a good signing, and to be fair, there was four signings that are going to be given the green light already when Charles' new owner comes in. So, you know, very good from them there. Speaking of predictions, let's start predicting, except, of course, the Doncaster game, which coincidentally, alphabetically, is the last game on the list, which is Wigan. Uh, we're facing Wigan away. But apart from that fixture, which we'll predict on Friday, let's predict the other fixtures taking place on Saturday the 3rd of October, the first set of October fixtures in League One next weekend. So let's start our predictions with Wimbledon against Accrington Stanley. Uh, wow, this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, Wimbledon, you know, I think they've got some quality in them. I think that Wimbledon do have some quality in them. And I think that uh, they can try and fight in this game. Accrington, of course, need a win to bounce back from it. I'm going to go with a 2-1 Accrington victory. I'm going to go with that. I think Accrington will just edge it. And I think Wimbledon might be in a whole heap of trouble after that. Next up, Black, Blackpool versus Lincoln. This is going to be an interesting one. Um, I'm going to go with a 3-1 Blackpool loss. I think that Lincoln will probably just edge that one. I think Blackpool did win to, uh, yesterday, 2-0 against Gillingham. Uh, but I think that... Um, I think what well uh, uh, no they didn't win they lost they lost two 0 to Gillingham so I think Blackpool will continue that losing run. Um, I think Lincoln will win three one. I think that Lincoln will definitely be a tougher opposition than Gillingham and if Blackpool lose against Gillingham then you know it, it, I think they can lose against Lincoln so I think Lincoln will continue that good start. Blackpool will be looking for a route back so they will be tough against Lincoln but I think that you know Lincoln will just edge it in the end. Um, next up, Bristol Rovers, Northampton Town. And this one's going to be an easy one for me. I think Northampton's going to bounce back. And I think it's going to be a 2-0 win for Northampton. I think Bristol Rovers definitely just won't be at the races. And I think that Ben Garner might go after that match. Um, or it might be a couple matches. Like two, three, four more matches yet until Bristol Rovers sack Ben Garner. Or it could be soon. You never know. Uh, Burton Albion taking on Portsmouth. Uh, very interesting clash here. I think that this is going to be a tough one. I think... Portsmouth got their first goal last week, but still waiting for their first win. And uh, Burton Albion, of course, they lost 4-2 to Swindon yesterday, so uh, they want to bounce back. And um, I think this is going to be a bounce back for Burton. I think that it's going to be a 2-0 win. I think Portsmouth will not score again, and I think that Portsmouth will still wait their first win. And I think, come on, I think either Burton or a couple more losses in a row will have to be the final straw to sack Kenny Jacket. You know, we're getting close to win till we all need a jacket, but Portsmouth fans may beg to differ. Uh, let's next up, Charlton versus Sunderland. Big, big clash this one. 
big top of the table clash between the Black Cats and uh, the Reds, the famous Reds of Charlton. Um, I think Charlton will... I think this is going to be a tough one, you know. I'm, I'm, I was originally thinking Charlton will win this by two goals to one, but I'm thinking maybe it'll be a 2-2 draw because Sunderland will have something to say about that. Um, next up, Hull City versus Plymouth Argyle. I think this is, a, this is an easy one for me. I think it's going to be a 3-0 Hull City win. I think Hull City is going to dominate that game. No, dis no disrespect to Plymouth, but I think that Hull City will definitely uh, dominate that game. But... Like Plymouth has shown in past games this season, it's going to be a very entertaining clash. It won't be one of those 3 nils where a team just lies down and takes it. I think Plymouth will still play the way that they play. I think that Plymouth will provide an entertaining match, but they'll just lose 3 nil. I think maybe it's one of those performances like the Northampton game where Hull City maybe not the best performance ever, but they got the win. And I think Hull City will just get the win, maybe not the best performance against Plymouth as well. So, uh, I think Plymouth will will lose that 3-0, but I think it will be a closer performance than the scoreline shows. I think it's just the goals and the chances taken that will decide it. Uh, MK Dons versus Ipswich Town. I think this is an easy one for me, 3-0 Ipswich. I think MK Dons just haven't shown enough uh, this season yet. They've shown signs of attacking intent, and they've shown signs that you know they can build something under Russell Martin. But I think in this league, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. And I think that Ipswich Town will dominate that 3-0 to try and keep up the top of the top of the table. Um, Oxford United versus Crew Alexandra. Of course, Oxford getting their first, uh, well, first points on the board, really. Their first three points. And uh, Crew getting their first three points as well. 2-0 win uh, yesterday. So, very, very good for Crew and Oxford. This is going to be a tough one, but I'm going to go with a 2-1 Oxford victory. I think Oxford will just edge this one, but I think Crew will give them a good game. Peterborough versus Swindon. Now, this one is usually a nice, easy one. I'd be predicting a win for Peterborough, but Swindon have been showing the better form here. I mean, looking back at that uh, League One table, Swindon 6th, Peterborough in 19th, just getting that win the previous weekend. So I think that um, Peterborough will struggle again here. I think Swindon will be up on course for staying with good form. I think we're looking here at a 2-1 Swindon victory. I think Peterborough will score, but I think since they've sold Ivan Tony, they're going to be, you know, they're going to be struggling to find the goals from the club. I think that Johnson Clark Carris, you know, he is a good player. I think that uh, he's a, a good uh, striker. He can get the goals definitely, and I think that him leaving his former club uh, Bristol Rovers, I think that he's uh, he's caused them a bit of a problem now. It's like it's like when they leave. When a player leaves that's been crucial to your club, it sort of gives your old club more problems. Um, you know, and being a Peter Bree United player, I think he just needs to find the goal threat. I think it's kind of like John Jules at Rovers. One goal gives you confidence to score more, but I think that it's going to be tough. It's going to be really, really tough, but I'm going to go with a 2-1 Swindon victory. Next up, Rochdale Fleetwood. Very easy one for me. I think it's going to be 3-0 Fleetwood. I think Rochdale are in complete turmoil at the minute. I think that... Uh, it's not going to be easy for them one bit. I think that Fleetwood are going to be dominating this game. And I think that uh, it's going to be a very, very good one. Uh, next up, Shrewsbury Town versus Gillingham. And again, I'm going to go... And this is the final one, of course, because of course we're not predicting Wigan and Doncaster till Friday. But Shrewsbury-Gillingham. I mean, Shrewsbury did put a good show of themselves up in the draw. I think that uh, Gillingham with the 2-0 win over Blackbur uh, Blackpool. Sorry, not Blackburn. Uh... <laughs> Um, I don't know, you know, I think that Shrewsbury could provide a tough game, but I definitely know that when given the opportunity, Gillingham can strike under Steve Evans. They've built up a good reputation under Steve Evans' man management, and I think that what we're looking at here really is uh, a really close affair, but maybe someone, again, like a couple of games that we've predicted, I think someone will just edge it. Um... So, looking then at what I think will happen, I think what we're looking at here is, um, I'm going to go with, you know what, screw it, I'm going to go with a 2-1 win to Gillingham. I think Gillingham will just edge it. Um, don't know who's going to get the goals, but I think that Gillingham will just edge it. Maybe a 90th minute winner, maybe. Um, but yeah, I think that this is going to be uh, an interesting one. So, uh, Shrewsbury Gillingham is going to be a, a close encounter like a few of the games. But I think overall, with what's what we're looking at with the games, 
I think that next weekend will be a tough one for many, many, many teams. And uh, me personally, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I really can't wait for it. And I cannot wait to see these teams collide in their respective matches. And then, of course, Wigan Athletic Doncaster. Can't wait for that one as well. So now we're going to do something we've not done in previous shows. We're going to look at the other EFL leagues. Now, we haven't done this in this show before, but I thought, you know what? Let's pay respects and have a look at the leagues. Uh, so starting off then in the championship, looking at the table, uh, Reading, Swansea, topping the league, Swansea on goal difference, Watford just behind, Blackpool, uh, Blackburn, Bristol and Luton make up the playoff places, very interesting there. Uh, Birmingham, Millwall and Brentford make up the rest of that top nine. Heading into then 10th to 18th where you've got QPR, Bournemouth, Norwich, Coventry, Rotherham and Stoke on four points. And then Cardiff, Huddersfield and Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough make up that last three on three points. Then Middlesbrough with two points. And then in the final six places you've got Preston and Barnsley with a point. Uh, and of course Nottingham, Derby and Wickham still waiting for some points on the board. Uh, Derby on the relegation zone and goal difference to Nottingham Forest who have also made a slow start to this season. Uh, Derby, of course, thrashed 4-0 by Blackburn. And, of course, they can see at the bottom Shre Sheffield Wednesday, who, despite points on the board, are still on minus 8 because of that 12-point deduction. All the way down, then, to League 2, where you can find your top three teams by a point. Cambridge, Port Vale and Newport County. Crawley, Morecambe, Harrogate and Salford make up the playoff places. Uh, with Colchester and Bradford making up the rest of that top nine in five points. Staying with five points in tenth then, Forest Green, uh, then followed by Stevenage, Orient, Walsall, uh, Scunthorpe, Exeter on four points, Cheltenham, Carlisle and Barrow on three points, Barrow with two points of course. Uh, we know that Walsall, Leighton Orient, Cheltenham and Grimsby, who we can find in the second half of this league, uh, we know that they haven't played yet because, of course, both games were postponed due to positive COVID cases. And looking then at that uh, final six, Mansfield, Tranmere on two points, Alderman, ba uh, Alderman Bolton still waiting for points, but they are, of course, uh, out on uh, some kind of goal difference system. And then looking at the relegation zone, Grimsby, of course, still yet to play an extra game. And Southend United, who have not made the best start to this season. So that was predicting uh, the, the games for League 1 next weekend as well as looking at the Championship and League 2 tables. Just a little bit of information about the uh, fixtures going on over there uh, this past weekend. Well, this weekend. And uh, yeah, a lot of stuff going on with the Championship and League 2. I thought I'd just, you know, look at those tables. You know, make sure we... Because we're, we're all one pyramid. It's not just one league. We're all one pyramid. We're all one unity. We're all one community. So it's, it's good to look at the other tables and see what's going on with them. Uh, very surprised to see Derby in the relegation zone, but not surprised technically because I saw their performance on the highlights last night and they were not good at all. The defending was poor. Defending was shambolic against the ruthless Blackburn Rovers. Tony Mowbray admitted they were ruthless and, uh, you know, they showed no mercy. Didn't give them air to breathe, really. Uh, Nottingham Forest, again, lost 1-0 to Huddersfield in the... Uh, the Friday night uh, kickoff on that in the championship, and you know again, I think that um, you know I, th I think that Huddersfield getting their first three points. I think Carlos Cobran with his uh, mentor Marcelo Bielsa, the Leeds manager, in the stands for that match. You know he's playing today against Sheffield, Sheffield United in the Premier League, so uh, hopefully for Leeds they have a good win for Sheffield United. Hopefully they get a good win instead. Um, but I think the mentor kind of helped. I think Carlos Cobra getting his first three points on the board as Huddersfield boss would be great. Not a good start for Nottingham Forest, but I think it's you got you got to ease those new players in. So I think it's going to be time for the Nottingham Forest manager really. Um, and I think that hopefully he will find the time to uh, to to, to, to de develop the squad. But I think you know five six more games later, if they haven't got a win on the board, then I think it's bye bye manager. Um, and Nottingham Forest could be in trouble, as will Derby if Philip Koku doesn't get his squad together. In League 2, loads of big scores there. Cambridge and Port Vale dropping points. Harrogate have been the surprise package for me. Absolutely 100%. Salford and Forest Green will be up there in a title race. No, no guarantee. Well, absolute guarantee with that. But Harrogate could be the very big surprise package going into the playoff race. I think that Harrogate are a well-run club. They've got a great manager. 
and you know Nicky Weaver and his dad have done a fantastic job with Harrogate and I think that Harrogate are going to be a big package uh, surprise package for the league I think Harrogate just need a new stadium that's going to combine with championship quality I think a championship quality stadium going into premiership quality stadium I don't know, something like a 12,000 12, capacity stadium or something when they get the funds together. I think that'll be the, just the next step for Harrogate. And I think that, you know, Harrogate really will, you know, they'll develop as a football club, no doubt about that. Uh, Leighton Orient, of course, their match against Walsall postponed because of the positive COVID cases with Leighton Orient. And of course, they can't field the squad together. Uh, they couldn't field the squad in the Spurs match in the Cup. So, of course, Spurs got a bypass without kicking a ball. Um, I mean, make what, you, make what you want about that. Comment down below what you think about that. Cheltenham and Grimsby, that one also postponed due to positive COVID cases. And uh, obviously, they will play each other. Grimsby will play their next match, hopefully. Um, you know, I mean, I, I don't know who they're playing next, but I think it puts that match under threat. But I think that hopefully they'll, uh, they'll get that one passed. But uh, big stuff from the Championship and League 2, as well as League 1 there. So finally then, to end the video, let's have a look at Darren Moore's press conference reaction to the win against Bristol Rovers. So I've got some official quotes from a free press article. Uh, no extra information from this article. I've just picked out Darren Moore's quotes from the article and I'm going to share with them with you right now. Let's look at Darren Moore's reaction to the 4-1 win for Donny Rovers against Bristol Rovers. So Darren Moore officially told the free press after the 4-1 win, I think it should have been more. My message to the players was, while I'm delighted with the three points, we could have been ruthless when we got in, into the opposition area. It's something for us to look as we move forward. I'm pleased with the three points, though. It's a funny match, but the one where we had to stay at it throughout. We got into those chances. If I was sitting here and they were, the, there weren't the chances, that's where I would worry. I feel that we've got the players here that if those chances keep coming, then we'll finish most chances. It's probably a mindset thing more than anything in terms of when those chances do come, then it's taking them. I was really pleased with the performance, the chances we created and obviously getting the three points. It was a frantic game at times, end to end, but when, we get the ch when the chances came, we took them to get the valuable win. It was a bitty game in spells, but once we settled down, particularly in the second half, we got the patterns going. Credit to Bristol Rovers, they made it difficult for us and changed their shape and system for the first time this season. We had to fight hard for it today and got the three points points so that is Darren Moore's reaction to the match and to be, to be honest I agree with him I think that we could have scored more I think you know I was seeing fans on social media saying let's make it five let's make it six let's make it seven um there was a lot of goals that people were crying out for and I think that that's one thing I think we do need to keep working on uh even if we're 4-1 up against Wigan next week make it five make it six make it seven, make it embarrassing for the opponents to concede that many goals. Um, obviously, with Wigan, we're not really playing a three-at-the-back formation next weekend. We're not playing against a three-at-the-back formation next weekend. So, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. Um, but I think that, you know, going into the Wigan game, I do feel confident. I do feel some kind of confidence with the Wigan game. I think that it's going to be a good one. I think that... Uh, Wigan under John Sheridan got their first victory of the season against Portsmouth yesterday, so I think that that's going to spur them on, especially with it being away from home. Now they can take that form into their home ground for next weekend. Um, and, you know, away from home, you know, we're doing good. We're, we're, we're doing good. I'm not going to lie, we're doing good. We, I mean, we got that first away victory of the season away at Charlton the previous weekend, so I think that uh, we could take the, the winning away form and make it two out of two in away games and make it, you know, three consecutive wins uh, across the league. So I think that, you know, we've we've got a good side that we can take to Wigan Athletic. I think many other seasons where we've had poor sides and we've played boring football, I think we would have worried and said we're going to get slaughtered by Wigan. But I think we could take some positive form into this. I think we're going to got some good players. We're not going to underestimate them. I think they definitely are going to be up there in terms of the top 10 of the league at the very least uh, maximum promotion but I think that you know Wigan under John Sheridan they do have some flaws that have been pointed out by other teams and I think that if we can point those flaws out and capitalize on them in the way that we've done with previous teams I think we can provide a good result so good reaction from Darren Moore from the press conference very agree with him we need to be more ruthless we need to score four five six seven if we can 
And, um, you know, I think Bristol Rovers, when they changed their shape, I agree they did, you know, give us a tough game a bit when they changed their formation. But I think once the the goals started flying in, I think we were just, you know, unstoppable at that point. And we could have scored more. We probably should have scored more with a couple of chances. So hopefully we can improve on that and uh, take that going into the Wigan game. So thank you very much, guys, for watching this episode of the DRFC Daily Report, sharing with you Darren Moore's press conference reaction from the Free Press. And also sharing with you the League One other fixtures, the predictions for next weekend's games, the League One table, the Championship table, and the League Two table. That's a lot of things. And um, yes, don't forget we've got another DRSC Daily Reports coming tomorrow with any other uh, information from Doncaster Rovers coming out onto the internet. And for now, guys, I am the CHALL. Please like, comment, subscribe for more. Don't forget we've got a very exciting video coming next week, so stay tuned for that. And for now, guys, have a nice day. Oh, my God.